With the broad, previously treated label um, following the cabinet trial, and how are you interpreting Cabo's role? Um, you know, in the post somatostatin analog setting, you know, with and I'm, I guess I'm asking about kind of extra pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor and pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor. So I think to interpret right, the reason FDA gives it a broad label is for providers and physicians like us to decide. Because insurances use the FDA label to get it, you know, to approve a therapy, and they want us, they don't want us to, to box us. But truly, when you go and look at the study itself, the cabinet trial in both groups had patients who had progressed on an SSA and one more line of therapy. And that one more line of therapy could have been PRRT or you know, lutetium dotate and Everolimus, either of the two in extra pancreatic nets, and Cape Tem. Everolimus, sunitinib, or PRRT in the pancreatic net group. So these are the therapies that were counted as one prior line of therapy. So that's how NCCN guidelines have approved it, and that's how I use it, is in patients who had one therapy in addition to SSA. Okay, so third line, if you would say. That's how I typically use it because that's how it was studied. That's how NCCN wants to, it to be used. Have I used it in second line? Yes, because there are patients of mine who have who cannot get radioligand therapy because of some or the other reason. And then I may have to move CABO to the second line. The FDA label gives me that flexibility to tailor it to my patient. But on a routine basis, you, I, NCCN guidelines probably give you the right indication. <laughs>